listening to White The Truck. Oh dear Lord, Chad. My Why are the we? mighty have grown? What is going on here? We have come a long way. Where's the hot yoga studio of sound? <laughs> We've even gone past that. I feel like George Jefferson, we're coming on up Man, to and the you top. Know, this is the culmination of the hard work of a lot of people, not just the two guys who are right. sitting right here, not just the guests we have on the show. A lot of guys behind the scenes, a lot of guys on the financial side making this happen, general manager of the company putting this together, Yep. people like Craig Fuller, and it looks magical. We have podcasts. And you guys do, right? And these yeah. guys watching at home. Thank you for watching on Facebook, on LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube. Keep on tuning in. We love you. And, uh, you know, we sit from from podcasting in closets to mm. to JP's house with a 30-pound cat crawling all over us to here in the studio at Freight Alley. Ooh. These things are happening. It's exciting. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. Uh, you know, some, some juicy. This is a juicy day because there's a lot of gossip going on, you know? Yeah. Last month, FedEx broke up with Amazon in the air. This month, FedEx... Yeah. Broke up with Amazon on the ground, Chad. <laughs> yeah, so uh, where are they going to be hitching a ride? You know, I, be careful who you hitch with. Hey, have you ever hitchhiked, Dooner? I have, you know, I haven't hitchhiked, but one time my car broke down on the side of the road and yeah. I walked over to this home, my buddies and I, and we were like 16. And we walked over to, yeah. on the side of the highway like a horror movie and a guy did open the door and he did, give, he like offered us beer. Yeah, <laughs> not a ride, but a beer. No, he offered okay. us a beer. It was, it was strange, you know. Um, but we're gonna have Kevin Hill on tonight. He's gonna be our relationship yeah. counselor on this FedEx Amazon thing. Help us digest it. What's going on there? Yeah. Will they ever yeah. make it together again? I don't think so. That'll be some kind of therapy. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right, man. Let's get to the headlines. We yeah. Get a lot. <laughs> Woo! Load smart. And Starsky Robotics, they collaborate to price, dispatch, and deliver first automated loads. Digital freight brokerage LoadSmart and self-driving startup Starsky Robotics announced today, Today? August 8th, yes, that they have successfully priced, booked, and delivered not one but two loads of freight without human intervention. The pilot project, it's part of a larger strategic partnership that paves the way for the future of trucking. Autonomous brokerages dispatching freight to autonomous trucks without human involvement, the company said in their joint release dooner. Mm. The automated loads were delivered in late July in Texas, according to Hunter Yaw, Vice President of Product for LoadSmart. (laughs) I love that name. I know. Hunter Yaw. Something really important was said there, though, Chad. Yeah. And, but it wasn't by Hunter Yaw. Oh. He, I mean, he said some other important stuff, but it wasn't that. And this guy also has an amazing name. His name is Stefan Seltz Axmacher. And wow. he is the chief executive and co-founder of Starsky. But he says this, automating yeah. the brokerage means that it costs less money to move goods via truck because you don't need to pay for all the back office overhead. From his perspective, it means the folks on our trucking operations team can spend more of their time talking to drivers and solving driver problems than haggling on rate per mile with a broker. Chad, are the brokers being put on notice there? Well, let's hope not. Yeah. Yeah. Let's hope that there's going to be a place for everybody at the table. I know, but what was interesting is, like, usually yeah. we hear about, like, truck drivers being afraid of losing their jobs with autonomous. Oh, yeah. But this guy instead is like, well, actually, we might be actually cutting out the, yeah, the, the 3PL the, a little the bit. Middle, I don't see that happening anytime soon, if at all. Well, okay, OMB confirms hours of service rulemaking still under review. This is probably going to be an ongoing story for a long time and one review after the other. But the rulemaking proposal, sure. which Fer- Federal Maritime Carrier Safety Administration, that's the FMCSA, yes. Chief, Mr. Ray Martinez, he originally anticipated rolling out as a part of a fast-track schedule, was initially delayed by the federal government shutdown that occurred in late December 2018. U.S. Department of Transportation, that's the DOT, Secretary Elaine Chow, Subsequently confirmed in late March this year at the Mid-America Trucking Show that the proposed rulemaking had been sent to OMB. Although quick approval from OMB was considered likely given the significance of the rule, the original publication date wasn't until May 8th. With Hmm. a comment period ending June 6th, the publication date was then pushed back July 31st with a comment period ending September 16th. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. But given the latest delay, a final rule may not be rolled out before the end of the year. Mm-hmm. But even if a final rule isn't published until early 2020, an implementation date 
for changes made to the rules, which are usually three to six months later, would still fall under the three-year rulemaking time frame that Martinez had said he was hoping to beat. Oh, so, oh well. You know. Uh, and Brexit and the ongoing U.S.-China oh, yeah. trade war might sink European See, it's not economy. just us. It's not just us no, who's a little dysfunctional here in America. Yeah, it's it's the Europeans too, possibly. <laughs> as the oh, as the U.S. turns the screws on China with its recent announcement to levy a 10% tariff on 300 billion more yeah. of Chinese exports, the European Union is clueless about the damage this could cause to its economy. Latest among the U.S. accusations is that China is a currency manipulator, mm. an allegation that is not completely unfounded as the Chinese yuan fell below the virtual glass ceiling exchange oh. rate of 7 yen per U.S. dollar. The yuan currently trades at 7.04 per USD. This deflationary situation will reverberate across European markets, which are already oh. slipping into recession. <laughs> not that word. <laughs> the, the German manufacturing market is in its worst shape since 2012 when the Eurozone crisis played out. Major German automakers like Daimler and BMW manufacture uh, many of their exports to, to China from U.S. plants, and the tariffs war has caused a steep decline in their Chinese sales, Dooner. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Uh, the, the, this is a part, like, the U.S. has been pressuring the EU to buy agricultural products, a push that will only grow stronger yeah. as China starts looking the other way. With Brexit looming on the corner, the EU's economy is in a state of shock, and it might take a miracle, a miracle, Chad, <laughs> to, stay, to stop the steep decline in Chinese sales. Do you think so? I'm praying for a miracle. All I need is a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> No All cowbell right. for that. What about the GAO? The G well, because, you know, we're saying recession. I don't like using that no. term. We're trying to stay away from yeah, it. Yeah, just a desk yeah. bump. I did see an interesting thing, though. Uh, I think it was Phil Moody who sent it, and he was talking about the trucking recession that happened in, in 2008. And there was, like, yeah. hundreds of carriers that went out of business. 800, I believe. It was crazy. Yeah, yeah, like 100 times more than have gone out of business so far. So we're not there. No. No. Not even close. I mean, look at the Dow. I mean, the, there's always panic when you hear the word recession, right? Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's more than a correction. Well, GAO is critical of outdated inspection practices at U.S. ports by Customs and Border Protection agents, Chad. Oh, boy. United States Customs and Border Protection, that's a CBP for those of you who like the acronyms, is uh, inspecting policies don't reflect new technology or threats and are outdated. Shocker. According to an August 6th report from the GAO, which is the Government Accountability Office, CBP and Border, CA, CBP border Inspectors for Passenger and Commercial Vehicles currently include... Reviewing travel documents, screening as law enforcement databases, and using canines and x-ray machines. However, CBP has not updated all of its policies and training materials in some cases for 20, 20 years. years. The GAO review stated CBP has also not kept up with changes in technology, such as newer techniques for conducting searches and handling drugs such as fentanyl. Mm. Which, you know, Michael Jackson died from, Tom Petty yeah, died Prince. from. I mean... Yeah. Uh, yeah, Prince. Yeah. And I, Trump had tweeted that the reason he instituted those new 10% tariffs was because the Chinese weren't doing enough about fentanyl. Weird. Remember, we thought that was kind of random, a random yeah. inclusion in that tweet. Just another one time. of those curious tweets. Yeah. Well, you know what we're going to do now? We're going to have five good minutes. Yes! With Kevin Hill, our relationship counselor on the scene. Bring in the director of research. Head of Freight Waves Research. Five, count of five, 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 five good, good minutes. minutes. Here he is. Hey, Kevin come on Hill. in, Kevin Hill. Oh, man. Kevin, did you sleep last night? I did, yes. Okay. Yeah. You slept well. I did. All right. Well, I thought maybe because you do all this research and everything on and this Amazon FedEx situation, it may have, it's almost like your parents getting divorced. Yeah. Do they need couples therapy or is this a healthy break between the two Titans? I think it's a healthy break. Yeah. Yeah, I, I do. I, now, I think it's a oh. healthy break. They were just uh, casually dating anyway, so it's <laughs> yeah. not like they were married anything. 1.3%, yeah. you know? right? Yeah, 1.3%. So it's not a divorce. No, it probably wasn't a, a great piece of margin business with two-day delivery. Yeah. Now you go roll into one-day delivery, and it, the, the, the juice or the squeeze. Are you guys the, juice. Are you guys prime customers? Are you, do you have oh, prime? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, I yeah. Do. Oh, yeah. I was, you, you get we, a lot of side benefits. It's like, it's like yeah. friends yeah. with yeah. benefits. Yeah. Well, we were talking, like, <laughs> Kevin and I were talking when we walked in here, and I was like, 
I can't think of the last time FedEx delivered something for me from Amazon. I get UPS all the time, and I get USPS, oh, but almost never yeah. FedEx. I, I I can't remember myself, right? Yeah. yeah the last time either. I got a FedEx package from from Amazon. Yeah, yeah, maybe they were already kind of stonewalling. You know, they were at that point in the relationship. Because I Probably think that were. FedEx was threatened. But they, they overall they they feel like that that Amazon didn't have their best interests. At, at, at heart, they feel like they were really a competitor. Right? Well, they probably are, right? Yeah, so, they're spending so, too much I mean, time on themselves, too much time in front of the mirror, right? Yes, and too, you know, 40% of the time, right? Yeah. Amazon yeah. is in front of the mirror. Yeah. And, and that's plane? just going to grow. Yeah. You know, the time is just going to grow with that. So uh, so Amazon yeah. is, is looking for alternatives to, to deliver everything themselves. Well, here was from one and of the reports. They said Amazon... They said Amazon provided low margins for FedEx. The proliferation of high-volume, low-margin customers like Amazon is clear in FedEx's most recent quarterly report. FedEx UPS deferred package segment, non-priority shipments, and e-commerce parcels increased by 24% in volume, but dropped by 7% in revenue per package. Yeah, yeah and for FedEx, yeah, they had, there's plenty of other fish in the sea. Yeah. Right? There's, oh. there's Walmart, there's Target, there's yeah. uh, other e-commerce small business platforms like Shopify that's making huge investments. Yeah. into logistics for their customers. So they so, want one that doesn't always need a pat on the head. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That By the way, your yeah, hair feels course. lovely today, Chad. <laughs> what are you conditioner with? Uh, no, no conditioner, bro. Um, but I do have product. I'll just keep that to myself, though, unless they want to sponsor the show. Um, but, uh, hey, uh, Kevin, so but you know, some of the Wall Street analysts are saying that uh, Amazon's network is probably not much of a threat. But you're, you're suggesting that, you know, you're going to be a contrarian. Well, say, I mean, not over the next year or so. I mean, I think it's what over a hundred billion dollars in investments to yeah, yeah. to really be a competitor for FedEx or for UPS. Right, right. Uh, but they're trending that way. Now, yeah. whether there will ever be a, a true competitor uh, of FedEx, who knows? But uh, Amazon is a huge part of the total e-commerce delivery system. Is it for like forty percent of e-commerce is delivered? Amazon, uh, I might it, have that wrong. It, that might, it might, yeah, at least forty. Yeah, at least forty. Yeah. So that's a huge chunk of the market right there. So, well, how about this? So they can okay. control that. Seventy planes and ten thousand trucks is what Amazon's fleet is currently. Okay. Is that how big of a carrier is that compared to other carriers that are out there? That's a huge carrier. Yeah. There's huge. I think a lot of those are hot shots or cargo vans or, or not not truck. You know, class yeah. eight trucks, uh, but that's still a huge fleet. Are they I mean, counting? They're, they're huge. Are they counting wait, flex we, in that? We have uh, just a minute. We have on on Facebook. Uh, Craig Bliss mm -hmm. says, "I think the divorce between FedEx and Amazon is more political, or at least personal, between the owners of both empires than an operational move." What do, What do you think about that? Well, I think, um, you know, I, I I haven't heard of any real beefs between um, Brett Smith and and Jeff Bezos. My myself, yeah. you know, yeah. I mean, the, the, so I haven't seen any dirty laundry aired, kind of uh, like okay. Bezos has with, with others, but uh, it could be something to that effect. But I think operationally, the, that narrative still works. Because I have a tweet here, right? Oh, okay. So this one is from, if I can find it. Well, I would say while you're looking for that, yeah, maybe uh, it's been like, deleted. What? Why, why, Kevin, are, aren't... I guess it's been deleted. Are, is it just, okay, is it easy for FedEx to break up with Amazon because it's only 1.3%? Like, why Why are the UPSs or USPSs, I mean, I'm sure it's complicated in different ways, but why aren't they saying, you know what, we see you as a competitor to Amazon, we are not taking these rates, we're either going to break up with you or we're going to renegotiate. Why? Or is this maybe a tipping point? I, did, I, yeah. I, I, I think density of networks, right? So okay. I, I think it fits into density. UPS's model and certainly USPS's model, yeah. right, uh, of, of delivering parcels. Okay. So I think that's a huge part of it, and it represents more of UPS's uh, overall uh, revenue. But 1.3% of revenue, we're not talking about margin. I mean, how much do you make on that 1.3% of revenue? It could be zero, and with one day it could uh. be negative. Gotcha. So, yeah, good point. Guys, judge the tweet. I yep. found the tweet. It's from Dave okay. Clark. He's uh, Amazon's SVP of operations. Okay. He writes, nothing but respect for FedEx, but they were very small piece of our network and vice versa. We wish them nothing but the best, conscious uncoupling at its finest. We have great strategic partners who are part of our long-term plan, and we appreciate what they do for customers. 
That's their story, and they're sticking I, to it. Very politically correct, yeah. you know? Yeah. And I, I think FedEx delivered 4% of Amazon's packages, right? Um, Could be. So that's, that's part of the, the Amazon piece. So it's, it's really, it wasn't really a huge piece of, of either. Okay. Well, there you have it. Any, any, any last words for, like, what we should be thinking? Any takeaways that we've missed here in this uh, uncovering of this story? Yeah, what's a non-collaborative partner? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good question yeah. what well, is a non-collaborative partner i i think it's um i, I think it's something that, that fedex had to do and i think amazon i think they're just going in they're, they're growing apart they're going in different <laughs> directions yeah, okay. it's, it's like your your girlfriend after high school you yeah. guys grow take different paths in life yeah who, who it's, wins it's, it's who who, who wins? ends up better yeah who's in the bigger house at the uh at the end of the year <laughs> at the end of 10 years well only time will tell oh, they might get easy. might have both big so, but I, I think it's, it's a good deal for both. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah no, it seemed about right. Yeah. UPS yeah. would have been, UPS holds now, about 10%, right? Yeah. Of FedEx, I mean, of Amazon's business. Yeah. No, if UPS and Amazon broke up, that yeah. would be a huge story. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that would be, that would be huge to both be selling off. Yeah. Okay. Uh, stocks. Well, and, apparently uh, this has some investors scared because they're like, well, if this can happen to FedEx, even though FedEx pulled the trigger, what happens when Amazon and UPS start fighting now? Yeah, you know, I, so so Amazon, you know, basically another thing with the FedEx uh, position is that they got all the surge type of packaging that overload their network. So UPS might find themselves in a in a, a, a dire predicament with that extra freight coming in all at at the busy season in the fourth quarter. Right, could so, be in a bind or could be making more money. Depends true. on, I true. suppose, their capability to handle the density. Yeah, the right? density. Yeah, it's all about <laughs> density. Speaking of density, you've got a lot of density right there in your head, holding all that research together. Yeah, well, uh, yeah. Without how, the hair, you need. Well, how good, right? Kevin? Before we before we kick you out of here and get on yes. to our yeah. earnings over under, we got our own games to play. These aren't games of love; these are games of challenge. Yeah. Oh. But where can our viewers find out more about you and our listeners? It's all a podcast too. Yeah, so the easiest way is through my emails, uh, Cahill, so K-H-I-L-L at FreightWaves.com. Uh, Kevin, King of the Hill. King of the Hill. So that's uh, that's how you can find me. Any questions, just uh, drop me a line. All right, thank you, Kevin. You bet. Ooh, a little closing Kevin. bell on Kevin's time. Now, it's the battle of the originals. So we, we, had, uh, we had Rocky Apollo, dun, which dun, um, dun, the dun, man dun, walking dun. in right now compared it to, uh, <laughs> to, to himself, to, to Drago versus, <laughs> versus Apollo. Uh. So we'll see what happens in this one. We'll see. Yeah, yeah I was thinking about little... not letting him have a rematch, but <laughs> earnings over under. All right, guys. Are you prepared? Music. I'm. Uh, <laughs> hopefully, it'll be better than last time. <laughs> yeah, that's hopefully. all I can say. Can't be much worse than this, eh? <laughs> Who gets to go first this time? Come on, guys, hold my beer. <laughs> no, this said? is just really. Right. This is just a gamification of what we're really trying to do, which is educate the market on. Yeah. Uh, the, our viewers on some important earnings. And for people who don't know, this is John Paul Hampstead. Next to Chad, the originals on What the Truck, and it's very apropos he is on the show as we move into this brand new space in this brand new studio. Yeah, this is this is cool. It keeps Great getting better you, and better. Man. The octagon was something. This, yeah. The set is, is a little we've cooler come a long way. Too. We've come a long way since uh, House Panther was in our laps. <laughs> yeah. in, in your, we used to uh, record like, in my guest in bedroom. Your house. Yeah. Okay. Here All right, we guys, are. you ready to play? We are going to start out with the winner. It's you, Chad. So Magna International. Okay. Magna International, the Ontario, the Ontario-based automotive parts supplier and largest <sighs> auto parts manufacturer in North America. A dollar fifty-seven. I'm gonna say over, but just a little bit. Okay. Yes, yeah, over, but just a little bit. <laughs> no, no, I, I wrote the article. All right. He wrote the actual oh. article. He's yeah, like, so you that, wrote this article. Yeah, so. Although, you know, sometimes I write things and then I immediately forget afterwards because there's so much like information consumption, especially in a fast paced media place like this. Especially with earnings reports because it's like they kind the, the press there's release so hits, we have an hour to get it out. And then, you know, later on, we might listen to the call and stuff like that. But it's yeah. super mechanical. It's just like, uh, typing, 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 typing. All right, so I got a point, but I didn't gain anything. Well, yeah. he just matched. So dollar fifty nine. So it's dollar fifty nine. Why were they over? Uh, they were over mostly on $409 million of share buybacks. Uh, revenue was actually down 1%, but they management said that was actually uh, overperforming because uh -huh. global yeah. light vehicle sales uh, were down 6%. Okay. Yeah, it's a little confusing, but I guess so. All right. How about Lyft, guys? Lyft, ride-sharing app. 
Name, not as name brand as Uber, right? But they're pretty big. They're pretty up there. They used to have mustaches. I don't know if you remember that on the front. But <laughs> I don't. Did they lose a dollar sixty six? Uh, they didn't lose that much. They beat. So they were over. Over. Yeah. Over. You're both right. They only lost sixty eight cents. The uh, the company reported. Uh, JP's bringing it a little bit hotter this time. Yeah, defined as uh, defined as revenue less the cost of revenue with the aforementioned items excluded from cost of revenue of three hundred ninety nine million. An 88% year-over-year increase. That's positive, right? Contributed margin increased 390 basis points to 46% in the quarter. I'm like a cat reading. I don't even know what any of this means. The adjusted earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, and EBITDA loss of $204 million was $14 million worse compared to the second quarter of 2018. But, hey, guys, you've got to lose money to lose money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. no, They're new at this whole uh, public company reporting their financials thing so they get pretty goofy with these numbers but yeah the language uh, was really goofy they're though. growing really fast yeah i had no idea they what you did guidance and uh they didn't lose as much as some people thought they might so uber lost a lot of money as well uh they are well yeah i mean i, I don't know we don't know yet they um they're about to report their earnings i like, mean last quarter they lost, they lost oh yeah they yeah. lost the like billion almost or something exactly a billion yeah last quarter. when did these ride sharing apps start mm-hmm. making money um, basically, uh, the CEO of Uber said in an interview that they have lots of cash to keep growing as fast as possible, but they will they will pull the levers to get to profitability when the market demands. All right. Yeah. So <laughs> they're going to keep this train running as long as they can until uh, their stock price things, I guess. All right, guys. It's Ex- going to happen. Expediters, or if you're from where I'm from, expediters. Uh, the Seattle-based international freight forwarder, 80 cents over under. Going over. Also, uh, yeah, I'm going to say over to Yes. 88 cents. Customs Brokerage was the big star of the quarter, growing revenues in that division by 19.8% year over year to 750.1 million for the quarter. And as someone who sold 3PL services, the money was always in the brokerage because, you know, there's, there's limited margins. The way 3PLs work, I won't give away all your secret sauce, but the way 3PLs work is they go out to contract with agents overseas and they get freight at a certain cost and they resell it. But the brokerage is really where you can control the cost. You can charge anywhere from like $75 to $125 an entry. There's line items you can put in. But like other than cost of staff, that's a lot more stable than the volatility of the freight market. Yeah. Um, yeah. Brokerage makes a lot of money. Uh, what was interesting is that this quarter they saw um, a decline in air volumes. It kind of went to ocean. Um, and then what, the other really interesting thing about the expediters release, I thought, yeah. was that they actually broke out their revenue by global region. And revenue in pretty much every region went down by a lot, except for uh, the U.S., other North America, and um, South America. All right, guys. How well, okay. Okay. What happened there? I don't know. Something really reverby. <laughs> like we're all going through JP's mic now. Something uh, just really reverby happened in the uh, microphones. Yeah. I, I, but yeah. hey, the show must go on. We're going yeah. live here. Well, I feel like uh, we're all coming through JP's mic now. Oh, now we're now no, we're fixed. No, we're here. Yeah, we're, now we're uh, back. Okay. okay. So, right, uh, nice. well, uh, this has been a tough one, I have to say. Yeah, we're, I mean, we're neck and neck, Chad. Dismantling JP last time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm putting up a <laughs> bit right, of a. Yeah. I'm lasting at least it's, until around like hey, seven or eight. We're going toe to toe. Hatbag Lloyd, yes. Hatbag Lloyd, the Hamburg, Germany-based container shipping company, Hatbag Lloyd. Yeah. Was their net profit $59 million? Uh, Wait, okay. Over under. So this uh, is an earnings per share. This is their net profit. I am going to say, so is it my turn? Sure. <laughs> uh, no, I think it's his turn. It's Isn't it turn. your turn? Oh, it's your turn. Okay, I don't know. I haven't looked at their earnings, so I have no clue on this. But I thought I heard someone in the office say that they had a great quarter. So I'm going to go with beat. Over. Okay. He's going over. I read the article and they went over. So there you have it. There you All have right. it. All right. All right. You're, you're still tied. Well, you guys are wrong. They're oh, under. They only what? made 56 million in the second quarter of 2019. What? I know the way the human Wait. memory works. So I was, I was making sure to make that on purpose. But yeah, it was 59. Uh, it's and you, and you, you actually read the article. I think, I think, yeah. they, they, I think Chad up. should lose they, two points because he read the article. For like calling a shot for being like, yes, I know exactly. <laughs> I read the article. All right. Well, you have to give us the... Burp, 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 yeah. We yeah. Both, um... Thank you. All right. So we're still tied. Yeah.
Revenue for the second quarter this year was okay. $3.57 billion, though, compared with $3.36 billion in the same period in 2018. So revenue's up. One of the things I, I noticed and I read about um, Hapag Lloyd, I saw that they announced, um, and this has been really interesting because so many fires have been caused by this, but they're imposing a fee of $10,000 per box for miscategorized freight. Like if you have hazmat and you say it's like a general cargo or something like that, now, now, Hapag Lloyd, if they find out, they'll 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 find you ten thousand dollars. Andrew just asked if my mic was low. I don't know. I don't know. Is, is it off or low? That's what I can now. hear it. I can okay. hear it in your um, okay. In, in my uh, uh, okay. Are we on auto sliders here? What happened? This is what live TV is all about. Growing pain. Now, in I feel the like, studio. now I feel like my mic's off. No, I, right. can, I can hear you. Okay, good. Okay, Roadrunner Transportation EPS. Well, Zero. did they break even? I bet they uh, are a little down. Because they're Roadrunner and they keep trying to get all their act, their act together. I'm going to say under. Under. We've got to get some differentiation. We, breaker, we, can't, we can't keep saying the same the thing, breaker. right? So I'm going to say, I'm going to go ahead and say over. All right. He was right. And Chad was right. A little cat off the chat. Oh, Yeah. He was, he was 89 cents. Uh, what can you say? The asset light logistics service provider reported a 14% decline in total revenue year over year to 481 million. The decline was largely due to lower expedited logistics revenue, air and ground, and lower volumes. But you know how they. And all the companies' truckload offerings. You know how they framed it? They said, this is going to help us with our strategic focus. So wait, what is the score? I, I have two bonus ones. He's up here. by one. He's up by one. I have two bonus ones here. Uh, bonus. All right. All right. So all right. tiebreaker. All right, so, all right. There, and there's there's no way you guys would have inside information unless you were really into snack food. So the first one is <laughs> Hostess. Can I get a Twinkie? Hostess. Well, you know, you might. Well, you. Have oh wait, fifteen cents. cents. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> fifteen cents. Um, I'll say I'll say over. All right. Well, I'm going to say over too. See, I think that it, I'm going to go the what, counterintuitive what are you doing? approach. Jeez. I'm, I'm, I'm blocking him. <laughs> and, I gave you, I gave and you one. Overs oh. are seventy percent of the time. Oh. I think it's yeah, but the way yeah, yeah. but I don't. I try to how vary is, it up. So the it's question not. is, how is Hostess well like with all the snack, the the the, the healthy snack foods out there? How is Hostess tempering still? expectations, right? Well, it's their third right. beat in a row. It's their third beat in a row, and it seems like their momentum is snowballing, you ding dongs. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Little, uh, little hostess I mean, I mean, and maybe it's because Twinkies have a shelf life of like five years. All right. right. Last they one. Stopped, they stopped making them in 1980, and they All just right. keep selling out their yeah. inventory. Wait, wait, wasn't there? Remember, like in like 2011, there was this rumor that they were going to stop selling Twinkies. Remember, there was like a Twinkie panic, and like people were buying <laughs> oh, massive yeah. amounts of Twinkies. I you know what I'm talking about? Oh my god. Yeah. Wow. Right. Yeah. That. That was that was a lasting. That was memory. that was that disrupted the supply chain. It did the Twinkies. All right, so this is the last one here. Is Wendy's seventeen cents? Uh, hmm. Uh, I'm wait. It's you. Uh, it's you. You have to pick first. This is a tough one. Okay, I'll go. I kind of want to go over, but I'm just gonna go. I'm gonna go under. I'm gonna say under. Maybe they're suffering from the the Burger King announcing their their new high-tech vegetarian meat and McDonald's taking over the world. So Wendy's down. I'm giving you an, an opening. I'm going to say over because I read a report from Goldman Sachs. <laughs> all, of, all, 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 of the, all of the fast food stocks are on a crazy tear right now. And part of it has to do uh, with wage why? growth. Wage growth in the bottom 10% and 25% of earners has been really fast. And they're spending it all on the dollar menu. Yeah, so it was 18 cents. Wow, it's really informed. <laughs> JB, but so you're also a vegetarian like me, and when yeah, we go to yeah. fast food places, options are limited, and we don't have, like, the Impossible Burger out the here yet in Chattanooga, burger. but bring it to us, please, Burger right. King. Yes. And Impossible. So what's, okay. your, what, what's your fast food go-to place of choice, then? Uh, well, my fast food go-to place of choice is Taco Bell. I get yeah. the cheesy crunch gordita, sub beans for beef. But at Wendy's, I get a large fry and a Frosty. Oh, yeah, no, I'm dipping. dipping it. Yeah, I gotta go oh, chop you're it on making that. me hungry. Right. <laughs> well, yeah. thank you for joining us today, JP. Dude, thanks for having yeah, me. Yeah, I think it was a tie. I think it was a tie. Huh? It was a tie. I think you, right. you, also, you might have to come back. Another rematch is in the works. It's, it's not right. over. Let's keep this it's thing going. The, you need the rubber match. Like the, like the Rocky franchise. We'll yes. just keep, <laughs> keep, <laughs> keep yeah. going. Keep stretching out. Great. Rainbow thanks for having you on here again. One of the OGs, JP. What else we got going on now? Who's up? 
Oh, I know. We've got Dean Jen, Crikey. Get off Dean the Croak. Come on, it ain't no joke. Blockchain. Blockchain. Let's make it digital. Let's make it digital. Dean, Mean Machine Let's Dean. Digital, Dean. Digital. Often the driver of the Grumpy Pete is on. Dean, you just, you just tested. Probably making your grumpy Pete, your 2003 Peterbilt, kind of jealous. You just got off of uh, a Pronto experience, a 2019 autonomous truck. Tell us about this. Amazing experience, Chad. It was a, a, a white 350, uh, 579 called Lily. Every truck has to have a name. Yeah. Uh, this one was called Lily. And uh, what was interesting was the uh, okay. I'd never driven an automatic truck before. So that was a big shock was not having a gear <laughs> stick and a pedal. That's to, right. To Ever since you were like 12, right? right well, technically three when I started driving <laughs> wow. automatic cars. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I drive one through the garage wall apparently. So you have a – Apparently. Um, you have a CDL. I do. You've got the Grumpy Beat. You've driven the truck as he mentioned. And this was – was this your first ride ever in an, in an auto- autonomous vehicle? A- anything, even automatic. It wasn't even well. a ride. It was – you drove I it. Drove, you yeah. drove, so drove it. I drove it. We went yeah. out 27 north for a ways and, uh, and, and I drove back. And what was interesting was the, the, trans- the, you know, the automatic transmission – the uh, the ability to focus just on the driving task. You didn't have all these other things to do. Yeah. Uh, was it super smooth? Very smooth. Oh. Very. It was natural. So it, it's the level of autonomy where you don't take your hands off the wheel. Okay. Even though the vehicle steers itself when you engage in uh, autopilot. Yeah. Uh, or, or a co-pilot is, is as its name. When you put co-pilot into into um, engage mode, you can keep your hands on the wheel, which is what I do naturally, just just to be uh, precautionary. Uh, but it's you can feel it steering the whole truck. Did uh, you like that, or was it a little frustrating that you couldn't? So initially, finish? initially it was a little bit unnatural right. because your natural inclination is to want to control the vehicle. But after a little while, I started to relax and just kept my hands there and just let the truck steer itself. Yeah, and that's the part that I I thought over a long period of time that could actually be really beneficial and, and far less fatiguing. What's the cockpit like compared to uh, your regular diesel truck or the Grumpy Pete? Uh, so this, these modern uh, trucks are very er- ergonomic. They're also a de- perfectly designed for a fleet truck. So they're very, um, they've got quite a steep hood. So you've got great visibility around the front. So okay. I'm, I'm like, yeah. unlike my Peterbilt, because it's, got, it's a 379 with a long hood, uh, I, if I sit in traffic, I can't see the three cars in front of me. Oh, see, wow. Because you lose them under the hood. Gosh. Yeah. Um, so, so even, you know, two big cars or three small cars. With this vehicle, you can see the vehicle in front of you. A lot more visibility. So you've got a lot more visibility. Um, they're far more ergonomic. Everything's easily appointed. Everything's within. Everything's visual. Uh, you've got a lot more. The mirrors are fantastic. You, the seats are comfortable. So these new trucks that are designed for fleets are actually really, really comfortable to drive. Um, so as I understand, so this was a test drive. Pronto, um, they're, they're kind of doing a, a circuit of sorts. Yep. They had... A number? Did they have five engineers in there with you? I, I think they were oh, wow. all engineers. There was, there was three, what, three in the vehicle. What, were so. they in Wait, the in way? What, what were they doing? Uh, just what? watching and monitoring, and okay. um, and just uh, just you know monitoring the the driving and making sure that everything was working uh, you know as it should. And um, and there was a point in time I have to say I was really surprised. Uh, I was watching a vehicle uh, in my right hand mirror, and as I was looking away to watch this vehicle, I looked back twice because their rate of speed was closing, and I thought they might cut in front of me from the right. Yeah. At the same time as I looked in the mirror, someone cut in front of me from the left. Oh, wow. And the vehicle automatically, uh, the adaptive cruise control kicked in yeah. and decelerated the truck as the other car accelerated away. It, it measured the, uh, the closing distance, or in this case, the increasing distance, and then the truck accelerated back to speed. So pretty impressive. I, I was impressed because where this technology comes into its own is when you don't realise you need it. Yeah. And that's mm. when you're disconnected from the driving task because you're either asleep or distracted. Now, Dean is a sleep specialist. So let me ask you something. What was the sleeper cab like in this truck or did it have one? It had uh, two beds. Oh, wow. Two beautiful, beds. Beautiful, comfortable For the beds. engineers. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I guess so, because you, you still got to go with the engineer, right? Uh, it was the perfect team truck. Or for truck. Amazon FedEx. <laughs> You've got t- work things out. TVs, you can put a microwave in there, refrigerator, and everything you need to live away from home. I, I could see myself doing a lot of miles in a fleet truck like this. Yeah. yeah it's a, so, it so, you're, so you're sold. So you're a fan. So you're a fan of I'm, this I'm technology. I'm a fan of the – even though this technology will go in any truck, uh, most makes and models, the Peterbilt, uh, yeah, the big sleeper cab is just spectacular. But I, I, I'm a real fan of the technology because – 
uh, it, it's taken me two million miles to get the experience, and experience comes from poor judgment. And I've yeah. had a lot of poor judgment in my <laughs> life where I've made mistakes as a driver. What this technology teaches you to teaches you is um, it, well, it doesn't teach you. I guess it gives you all of that experience that I've had to learn the hard way, but it's in a software program. So yeah. it's actually it's providing a level of comfort that takes years to get. And, and that's one of the things that the, the public perception is that the it's we've still got a long ways to go with right. that, right. right? People not not realizing that it's sort it of took like, our jobs kind of thing. Well, there's all there's a lot of that. There's is are these things really safe on the road? But one of the things with these computer modeling is right is that to your point, it, it's taking the the experience of millions. Right and putting them all into a single right, right. source. Benefits right. of uh, technological event. I think yeah. this isn't a, the limitation here isn't technology, right? The limitation with autonomous vehicles is more regulatory because, yeah. and it's more public perception. It's a bit like saying, would you fly on a plane without a pilot? Yeah. Well, I know the pilot can, I know the technology can land and take off a plane right. without a pilot, but I'm comfortable having two guys up there. Um, I think the same will be applied to trucking. I think people's perception and comfort level will have to come first. Okay. Dean, Dean before you go, we, we always talk about this from the, the perspective of it being in electric trucks, but is it possible? You said that it can go in any truck. So is there is there room for this to adapt into diesel trucks and to go into legacy vehicles? Absolutely. It's an aftermarket technology. This technology came out of the passenger automobile space. Wow. So they're actually yeah. bringing a lot of that adaptive yeah. cruise, lane collision, uh, sorry, lane departure warnings, collision avoidance from the car experience into commercial trucks. Wow, Dean. Well, you're a lucky man. How do our, our, our viewers go out and reach out to you? I know you have a lot of interesting stuff, not just on sleep studies and not just on autonomous vehicles, but you're one of our your chief data guy. You know, you, 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 you're familiar with our sonar platform. Right. On uh, the back end, and data uh, on there is from Dean. Contact us um, uh, at Freightwaves. Nice. Where do they find you? You're on Twitter, right? Uh, yeah. Twitter, uh, Freightwaves M-E, at Freightwaves M-E. All right. Okay. Nice. And that's not for Maine, is it? Market expert. That's not for Maine. Emmy. No. Me. You, you do live in New England, though. Me. You yes. do. All right. <laughs> he lives in Boston. All right. South of you, you want to hit the cowbell before you walk out sure, of here? I'd love to. I would love for you to hit it. Nice. Thank you. Hey, nice. yeah. Nice. Just nice. Getting, a, getting a feel for yeah, it. Getting Roll a feel. Messy. Getting a feel. We'll have you hit a little harder next time. Okay. All right. Thanks, Great Dean. to have you in, Dean. Thank you. Thanks for that report on Pronto. Yeah. And now, without further ado, let's bring in Kyle Cunningham. You may have seen him live um, on the night shift last night. Got a notification if you're a follower of us, and that's the way you're seeing this. And that show looked fantastic, too. But he's here to join us to tell us what. On the Radar, presented by Sonar. I was a little late on that. Man, yeah. what happened to your booth? It was too hot. We had a, we had, we just exploded <laughs> out of here. You know what happened? Yeah. The viewers happened. The I love viewer, it. we were we've been doing such a good job with these streaming things. It was pretty easy to convince the powers that be to allow us to test monkey this in this brand new studio and make what the truck the no, first show to come out of here. It's it's, it's an honor. It's great beautiful. stuff. Thank you guys. Yeah, thank you everybody. Yeah, welcome. I, I was just checking. You guys have viewers and listeners in Amsterdam and Iran and like wow. you're worldwide. You know that? Yeah. Yeah, we're still working on uh, Mongolia. Like, That's fair enough. Antarctica. Yeah. Antarctica. Yeah. yeah. What the tr Dude, let's go drive a truck down Antarctica. Yeah. What the frozen truck. We could take... That Dean was just in here telling us about the autonomous vehicle that can be adapted into any type of truck. Amazing. I imagine any type of vehicle, right? Any type of car, at least. Yeah. Yeah. And it's come from passenger cars. It's pretty interesting. What about scooters? Are you going to have an autonomous uh, electric Vespa? <laughs> you could go down the phone uh, and that, you, you can be on your scooter and just yeah. scroll on your phone yeah. as you go down the road. I mean, part of the fun is just like twisting uh, yeah. that. Yeah. A guy can dream, as I say. So Kyle, uh, you have a bunch of new shows. He's got you got you got the night shift we mentioned. Night shift, yeah. You got traffic jams, your new show. All this stuff is gearing up for Freightwaves TV. Chad is also a big part of it. Tell us a little bit about what those shows cover and maybe touch on some of the disruptions coming into this weekend. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so traffic jams concept. There's traffic in Sonar now, and it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Cool. The, the reason being is that with the live traffic cameras. If you see a red zone or orange zone, just go in there, flash up a camera, see what's going on. If yeah. you're delivering freight, you can take a screenshot directly from Sonar and say, hey, look, I got a little backup. I'm going to be able to send this over to the receiver. And especially, it's it's hot now, but when it's cold, this stuff's going to be really valuable for operations. Yeah. And then in regards to night shift, we've really, uh, we'll, we'll have a really exciting announcement in regards to a, a featured sponsor that's going to be released soon. And then on top of that, um, we've formatted it from a two-person show into a four-man panel. So wow. everybody who's out there, I got to plug this right now. I am looking for 
anybody who's willing to come on a show like this, except at 7 p.m. on Wednesdays, I want you to come on my show, our show, and be able to speak about freight. If you can talk freight 30 minutes, small carrier geared uh, stuff. If you're a truck driver, please route yourself to Chattanooga. We'll have you on the show and uh, come All be right. a guest. All right. All right. I'm not, I'm not problem Let's that. get down to business, business. here, right? Where? Cyclones. <laughs> I'd like to know. Oh, cyclones. Go ahead. Hit, hit us with some cyclones. What's happening there? Cyclones as in... I don't know. Is there a cyclone <laughs> coming in? It's going to disrupt some ports. Well, where, where, like, let's hit to the bottom line. Where should drivers avoid yeah. this uh, weekend? Oh, man, this weekend. I was looking at volumes. I mean, everything's pretty steady across the board. If you really look at the concept yeah. of the outbound volume compared from this time last year, 2018, which is, or, yeah, it's, yeah, 2018 last year, which is really interesting because it was actually trending down at this point last year. There's been an inversion to where the national freight volumes are about 283 points higher than they were this time last year. So, you know, last year being this banner year of freight, this yeah. was, it was kind of dying down at this point where we're at right now, you know, seeing the outbound. But here's the other thing is that the current outbound rejections are under 4%, which is basically near an all-time low. So brokers, yeah. shippers, they're making good money. Carriers, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of them out there are basically keeping the lights on. So we need a little volatility in the other direction to keep those guys uh, running. But otherwise, I mean, stay tuned to Freight Waves now. I'm doing the carrier segment uh, nearly every day. have a couple fill-ins, but I'm going to keep you up to date uh, around noon that's coming out now. Yeah, and that's on Freight Waves now. So you want to be tuning in, checking that out. That's one of our video And speaking of cyclones, though, yeah. you got to yeah. look in a critical events tab. Yeah. Oh, yeah. See, yeah. I've just been, I've been so critical bogged down. Events. You know, No, I know. And you're not data. Nick Austin, who's usually here with the fast-paced forecast, but he's on the fast-paced vacation right Good, now. Good, he deserves it. <laughs> yeah, he does. He works hard. He just is. chasing he's too many storms, you know, and it tires you out. <laughs> what about the shippers, though? Is there someone the shippers should be looking to go? Uh, anywhere. anywhere. I mean, it's a shipper's market. It's a shipper's man. market. It's a shipper's market. It's a shipper's market outside of like, I mean, unless you're shipping refrigerated freight out of Spokane or Twin Falls. Yeah. Um, you know, or or you're, you know, shipping frozen stuff out of the middle of the country. It's it's a shipper's party. And the reason being is it's straight up capacity. I mean, we could spend yeah. two hours talking about that. But, you know, Sonar, lots of really, really exciting stuff that's going to be released this weekend. I'll save those details for the release notes. But if you're a Sonar subscriber... Go ahead, make sure you take a look at what's happening this weekend. If you want to be a Sonar subscriber, reach out. Kyle, I know that Absolutely. you love to have feedback from the fans. I, I heard you last night. You're apologizing to the brokers for some things <laughs> you may have said. But we do a segment on here called Common Section Rodeo, where we hear from our readers on the new and improved FreightWaves.com. And we're trying yeah. to incorporate some of the people in the live feed, too, who are typing yeah. messages. But would you like to stay and read a couple comments with us? Absolutely, man. All right, we have Let's some marked it. out for you on here. Let's cue the music. Section Rodeo. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Thank y'all. Who's that y'all guy? That y'all guy we were reading about earlier. Oh, you're you're doing good yeah. at being a southerner, man. You're really you're breaking in pretty well. As the yeah. guy from Boston, you got You've the really boots on. Yeah. The culture. I got I got the gun. I got uh. I was going to show us the boots. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Now yeah. you just need. All your, right. Put your, those back yeah, on. Your carry permit and a big lifted oh. truck. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know about that. Because I'm kind of <laughs> like, like a digital. I got like a digital horse. I, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. 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 All right. So here's Conversation Rodeo from, uh, from our dear readers. This is from the article, Firms Help U.S. Bypass China Tariffs Via Canada. Did you even know they could do that? I actually had a theory on that. I mean, what's stopping you from just going China, Mexico and say cross dock in Mexico and bring it in that way? Well, when I was with, uh, when I was with a, a, a broker who was very much in, entrenched in the border, one thing we used to do all the time was bring goods into Montreal. Mm -hmm. Now, it wasn't usually to get away from tariffs because the tariffs were pretty harmonized between the two countries at the time. But it would be usually to just expedite between ports. So we, you would yeah. come into Montreal, go down through St. Albans, Vermont. And bring it into New York. It really depended on location. But I could see that working for uh, tariff things, too. I, I feel like there'd be some trouble with customs if they found out what you were doing. Well, here's what Timothy R. says. He says, this is wrong, and I hope the administration acts quickly to update the law. More than likely, this is an old, out-of-date law needing to be amended. Zero back door for communist China. No leeway. Stop the smuggling. Hashtag stop the smuggling. Hashtag real Donald Trump. <laughs> Okay, you hashtag, heard it. You heard it here. He's he's had enough of these. I he's mean, had enough. My my hashtag is 
I mean, it's 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 com it's, it's a it's like a capitalist communist nation. It's really strange. My hashtag is more freight and more cowbell. More freight, <laughs> more freight. If this is more freight, then then that's good. It works for me. Yeah. I uh, on the same uh, topic. Uh, just some guy has this to say: This is not smuggling, as it is a legal business yeah. practice. Also, this is just one of many ways companies will find ways of avoiding tariffs, such as moving production from China to Vietnam. Yeah. The yeah. only thing the U.S. is doing is costing their citizens money and dragging their own economy. Hmm. All right, just some guy. Yeah. Uh, More than just some guy today. Famous. <laughs> More. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just some guy. All right, so new article. Kyle, why don't you read us? What, what's the, what's this article that you're... Uh, uh, looks like, okay, so Mercurygate ad, u- adds Uber Freight's capacity and pricing to TMS system. Uh, David T. says... I bet Mercury Gates broker and 3PL customer just love the awful message huh. this sends to them. In fact, I bet all of Mercury Gates broker customers are always already shopping for a new TMS software system. Mercury Gate just told all their broker and 3PL clients, "Hey, we are putting Uber freight rates in front of all of your customers. If I was one of the big 3PLs using Mercury Gate, I would be so blanked off." Well, well, the thing about that is. Yeah. Freight's gonna move, man. It's a yeah. it's a supply and demand driven economy, and you know, uh, disruption doesn't stop for people's opinions. Well, we did TMS integrations last year too, and it's a process, man. It, it is. It dude. takes time to integrate, and you can't just move off your TMS because they had Uber Freight. And Mercury Gate's one of the big ones. They're yeah. one of the big TMS. Once they start adding, all of the TMS are gonna are gonna start bringing. It. Unless you want to use like one of those crappy free TMS softwares, which I good luck. Really well, yeah, let's see luck. what Smith Jones says on the same topic. Yeah. What a stupid move on Mercury Gates' part. I have heard things have really gone to pieces there since a lot of their brain trust left. This just reaffirms what I am hearing. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Well, some of our readers are raging against the machine as these automated bulls go on parade in the article. Self-driving trucks now make deliveries in Dallas. Jimmy Wells, he said, any driver... Oh, jeez, look out for Dean out there. Any driver that helps <laughs> operate this thing during those middle miles need to have his knees broken. The Ouch. time for political action is over. If we don't stop them, nobody will. Wow. I mean, he's going to rally the troops. He's going to rally the troops. Wait, truth. I get to read another comment from Just Some Guy. He comments a lot. Just Some Guy also says that would do nothing to stop this inevitable technology from advancing. The only result would be one person in the hospital and the other in prison with a massive lawsuit to look forward to. Mm, wow. Well, that, is, that is really dark. These are it, really dark comments. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's really like Kyle, Rise is- of the Machines, the next Terminator. <laughs> They're coming for us, and there is a little fear factor. I, I oh, can see I it. Get it. With yeah, AI sure. and automation, and it's, it's you know, new. It's a brave new world. I mean, really, if you think about it, there's gonna be some trouble. It's not. Yeah. It's not perfect. Something's the whole thing happen. is, you know, life. Life moves forward. Oh, what do we got here? We got RJ saying driver has to be in the driver's seat entire time. How is this self driving? More like advanced version of cruise control. And here's the thing. Yeah. If that's the case. Um, the rates are going to go down, man. I mean, that's just how it's going to be. If it yeah. if it ends up being cheaper to place a butt in a seat, I mean, so like I tell everybody, don't freak out. Don't lose your mind. This isn't happening tomorrow. Make yourself more valuable. Get your hazmat, run oversize, run flatbed, mm. run the oil field. Hey, North Slope in Alaska, I was on the plane flying back from the wedding talking yeah. to this guy. He made 300K last year working the North Slope in Alaska, two on, two off, right? Yeah. Working two weeks a month, making 300K a year. Granted, it's like negative 75, but... But if you can handle it, if you can handle the frostbite, making some good dough. Well, and he has his CDL. So I was going to ask you if this whole Skynet thing had you running scared, but it sounds like you are like, you know what? You got to swim with the current. You're like adapt. And you mentioned airplanes. And it sounds like this autonomous stuff is a lot closer to the autopilot that's inside of an airplane than just a ghost truck, you know, driving down the street. I think what'll be really cool. And I mean, you you see the guy who's just in here, Dean, you've seen Grumpy Pete, you see myself on my list of, of, you know, what you like to say, I'm not buying a Lamborghini, I'm buying a Peterbilt, right? I love driving trucks, I love shifting gears, I love going up hills, down hills. That will never die. But the concept of freight's got to move, especially volumes, will continue to rise outside of a, you know, massive nuclear recession because yeah. of e-commerce, because of the population growing. Um, and so, you know, when it comes down to it, embrace the change, yeah. but make yourself valuable. This is the USA. You can do anything you want to do. Woo! Yeah, embrace the change. Hashtag freight gonna move. 
All right, guys. So you can find this show. You can find the old-fashioned audio podcast version on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and everywhere podcasts are heard around the world. Like us on LinkedIn. Like us on YouTube. Like us on Facebook. Like us on Twitter because you can see these live shows. And you'll also get notifications when Kyle goes live with things like traffic jams and and what is the other the night shift and all yeah, the crazy and we're going to be at Gats. If you're going to be at the Great oh, American yeah. Truck Show. Great American Truck Show. A little cowbell for Gats. So that's going to be good stuff. We'll see you all there. Yeah. They'll be there. Yeah. I'll be holding down the fort. This weekend, check out Freight Waves Radio on 146. That's Road Dog Trucking exclusively on Sirius. We're going to have Z Schreiber, CEO Fredos, who is on my own uh, Freight Waves Insiders. A deep dive with him. By the way, Kyle Littner of K-Ratio. He was on the radio show last week. Great guy. He's this week's subject Brilliant. on Freight Waves Insiders. Love it. Wow. Great all kinds about race cars going to be coming out. Uh, who else is on there? Sarah Hernandez, assistant professor at the University of Arkansas School of Civil Engineering. Freight Waves uh, data genius, Dean Kirk. You, Kirk was in here, right? you got to be careful be on the show your, too? Um, your, your uh, drumstick. There, yeah. Dude. You need a holster well, for that thing, dude. I sure do. <laughs> Jeff, what do you got going on? Um, Nothing. Nothing. Nothing at all. It's no, summertime, uh, man. It's, it's August. It's hot. It's slow. Yeah. All right, well, you can find him. I'll, I'll talk for you. You can find him at Chad Prevost on the Twitter. You can find me at Timothy Dooner. I don't know if you are on Twitter, are you? Not really. LinkedIn, Kyle Cunningham. Kyle Cunningham, yep. Chad That's Prevost, Timothy Dooner, coming at you live. Anybody got anything else before I hit the closing music? Goodbye. Woo! I'm going to take my cab out to the Old Town Road. That's going to be stuck in my head for like 10 days ago. And I'm going to bang it like I can't bang it anymore. Cal Cunningham. I'll see you wow. later. All right. Bang your cab out for the weekend. Thank you. Bang your cab out for the night shift. Bang your cab out for a free wage production team for putting this show on. Bang your cab out for Chad Prevost. Because you've been listening to What the Truck. Bang your cab out until your hands are bleeding, Chad. Bang your cowbell for the freight economy. Bang your cowbell for a soft landing for Amazon and FedEx. I think they're going to be fine. And bang-